Okay, so, what's up you guys? It is Sunday night. I have to go to bed very soon because I have to go drive my stepdad to Medford, which is a half an hour away, um, at 4 a.m. in the morning tomorrow. Um, basically, I've been in a great mood since yesterday evening. Um, I got a little tired today, and it was a little down, um, but that's okay, that's over with. I'm, I'm still tired, but I'm better, like, I'm, I'm not in a bad mood because of it. So, last night, I started to reread The Seven Spiritual Laws of Success by Deepak Chopra. Now, some of you may know his writing, some of you may not. I don't know all of them by all, by any means. I only know this one. I want to get into more, but this is the first one I have of his. And I was reading the first law, which is the law of pure potentiality. And it talks about how when you are able to rid yourself of the ego, which is your false personality, which is your basically your physical uh, personality, not your not your higher self. Um, once you rid yourself of that false ego, that false personality, that always, that makes decisions out of fear, out of wanting control, and out of wanting approval of others. Your higher self knows it needs no approval because it's equal with everything. It, it fears nothing because everything is the same, everything's connected. And it doesn't need to control everything, over everything because by being that true, that true self, you have the ultimate power available in all of life, which is the law of pure potentiality. You access the field of pure potential. Now, just saying that, the field of pure potential, that means that this field that you can access is basically a field of possibilities that you are, like, tapped into. How do you how do you not deny that importance? You know that kind of power. That means anything can happen. Anything. And I was reading that, and it talks about when you do that, when you reach that point, you begin manifesting things. Because see, nature is always in nature lives in that field. You know, nature is full of possibilities at all times. So when a human who for the most part, for the most for most humans don't live in that true form, they live in that ego. When a human does, nature is there ready to throw possibilities at you. And it throws them in the way that you manifest, that you aim. And that's called manifestation. Now, it talks about how when you're in that sort of state and you're 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 that person. You're you're who you are at your core. You you magnetize people to you. you. Magnetize good situations. You magnetize good luck. Whatever you want to call it, you magnetize things towards you, because nature is so ready to give it to you. Because it's just think of think of me, and think of me living it by my ego. That ego makes a bubble around me, excluding me from the field of pure potentiality that nature lives in, that nature thrives in. Now, you're you're a part of nature, no matter if you live in a house or in the woods. You are an animal, you are a part of this planet, you are a natural being. So this your whole life, this this force is trying to it's trying to, you know, give what it does to you and you're in you, you you're living in your ego that doesn't allow you to. Sorry, I uh, am multitasking right now, so I'm going to try to finish this, or at least talk and do that at the same time. I'm uh, making a video, super awesome time, you know how I roll, Bubby. Um, okay, so... Once you're in that, tr once you, once you're experiencing life in your true form, in your true self, or through your true self, 
the manifestations that come to you are the greatest things that you could find. And I've experienced this in small doses, but I've experienced it. That adventure that I had in Phoenix where I was completely myself. I had no fear during that time. I was not looking for any approval. If someone disagreed with me, I didn't care. It was like, okay, well, that that is your truth, and I completely accept it because this is my truth, and this is what's true to me. I had no worries about if they approved of mine or not, and I had absolutely no problem giving up control. If somebody else wanted to talk, I would let them talk. And as soon as they were done, and I listened, and I, and I you know, rebuttaled to what they said, or res responded to what they said, I was ready to talk again. It was just back and forth. And by doing that, by giving up those three things that the ego wants, I completely dropped every barrier. And the people were magnetized to me. I was only around a few people that night. But the people I spoke to really, really wanted to talk to me. They were willing to share their points of view. I was proved, I, I was not proved wrong, but I was, I was given the opportunity to, uh, to, um, disregard the stereotype of blacks. Okay. I'm not a racist person. I don't really care about race. It doesn't matter to me. There are people in every race that look, that make every race look bad white hicks who are white supremacists who want to kill every other race make me look bad. I don't like that. There are black people who make black people look bad. There are Mexicans who look Mex make, look, make, make Mexicans look bad. It doesn't matter. There are There's good in everyone. And some people decide not to show that and they decide to show the opposite, which is that's their thing. That's their deal. That's their life. But I was talking to this guy across the way from my friend's apartment, and he was black, and he ended up having some great opinions, and, you know, really elaborate, elaborated on what I was talking about, and this is the kind of stuff I was talking about, very deep, very insightful things that most people don't think about on a regular basis. I was perfectly fine with it. I loved the fact that he was proving that stereotype wrong, and my friend, who I was with, she said numerous times that she was just so sorry she couldn't talk more, but she was just absorbing everything I said because it was just, she just could not get enough of it, and I didn't even care. Like, that approval of hers didn't matter to me. It was, it felt good, but it didn't affect me. You know, it didn't, it didn't feed that ego. It was just simply a statement that I took into the conversation, and then I continued. And this book, I read this first law before, and it I hadn't experienced it in this, like, magnitude yet. And it was amazing to reread that now, now that I've experienced it. And I almost jumped out of my seat. In fact, I did. I danced around the RV. So, that was my last night, which was fantastic. And... There's another thing that I'm going to talk about in my next video. It says to practice silence. Now, silence meaning basically no outlets. You don't write. Don't read a book. Don't watch TV. Don't get online. Don't get online. Don't get on your phone. Don't speak. Don't have any communication. Okay? Just be for extended periods of time. And I wanted to try that. I, in fact, I, I, had, I had been trying it, or I had been practicing it for quite some time, ever since I read it. But, you know, I had slacked in the last few, in the last few months just from, I don't know, just forgetting. And I was silent for an hour before I went to sleep last night. And then I laid in bed for a good 35 minutes being silent again before I slept. And it turned amazing and let me tell you about that in my next video i'm going to stop this one real quick and i'll be back